Good morning. Today is Friday, August 12th, 2022. This week's Torah portion, the Parshan, Parsha of Eschanan, contains the Aseris Adibros, the Ten Commandments. Just like we had earlier in the Torah, in the book of Shmos, the Parsha of Yisro, so there it occurred as part of the narrative just a number of weeks after leaving Egypt. And now at the end of 40 years, before the Jewish people are going to enter the land of Israel, Moshe repeats what had been said earlier, almost 40 years earlier, at the revelation at Sinai, the Aseris at Dibros. What is very, very curious and attracts the attention of all of our commentators is that although purportedly it's the same text, Moshe now is repeating what God had said earlier, there are a couple of slight variations in the text that we find in our Parsha versus the text of the original back in Shemos. And there are a number of different explanations of why there are uh, discrepancies one of the most famous that I'd like to discuss with you briefly this morning is in the original, in the Parsha of Yisro, the Torah says, number four of the Ten Commandments, Zachar es Yom HaShabbos Lekadcho, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Zachar, remember. In our Parsha, this week, this Shabbos tomorrow, we will read Shomar es Yom HaShabbos Lekadcho, guard or protect the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So, as I mentioned, there are a range of different opinions of what this discrepancy means, why there is a discrepancy. But the one thing that we assume and that we assert is that it is not a question of a contradiction or a discrepancy. That's not the correct word to use. Rather, and this is what we express tonight in our davening, Friday night, when we say L'chadodi, we say, Shamar v'zachar b'dibur echad. The word Shamar, which occurs in our parsha, and the word Zachar, which occurs earlier in the parsha of Yisro, b'dibur echad. They were said by God as one word. Something our sages say that it is not possible for a human being to do, to say two different words at the same time. God was able to say two different words at the same time. So God said both Shamar and Zachar in one place. In the first instance, what is written is Zachar. And in the second instance, our Parsha, it is Shamar. All right, it's still a question of why God would communicate it in this manner. Let's leave that for another time. But this idea that two different words were spoken by God at the same time means to indicate to us that God was communicating there are two layers or two aspects to our observance of Shabbos in order to make it holy. There is the aspect of Zachar, of remembering Shabbos, and there is the aspect of Shamar, of guarding or protecting Shabbos, and both of those are necessary likadsho, to make Shabbos holy, to make it sanctified. What are these two layers? What are these two aspects of Shabbos? Here, too, there are a number of ways to understand it, but one which is shared by many of the commentators, and we've discussed this before, is that Shamar, guarding Shabbos, protecting Shabbos, means the details of observance, what we are allowed to do on Shabbos and what we are not allowed to do. The 39 categories of prohibited activity, the rabbinic restrictions, all of those details of observance are the ways in which we guard or protect the holiness of Shabbos so that we are only doing what is permitted and we are not doing those things that are not permitted on Shabbos. That's guarding and protecting. 
Zachar Es Yom HaShabbos Akad Show, to remember Shabbos Day, means to have an awareness of the spirituality of Shabbos, to have an awareness and a consciousness of the significance of Shabbos. To, the, the idea that on Shabbos we are connecting with God, the idea that we are commemorating the creation of the world, and that we are acting as God's witnesses in this world, that awareness, that spirituality is conveyed by this idea of zachar, to remember, to be aware, to be conscious of the Shabbos day. Every Friday night, Jews all over the world say a prayer just before Mariv, tonight, the evening service, a prayer or a passage that relates to Shabbos. And among different Jewish communities, there are two basic customs. One custom is to say the passage of Bame Madlikin. And the other custom is to say the prayer that starts with the word Kigavna. Bame Malikin is not a prayer. It is a chapter of Mishnah. It's the second chapter of Masech to Shabbos, the tractate of Shabbos, and it's the Mishnah that teaches us the laws of lighting Shabbos candles, how we light, what materials we use, what we do not use, why there is a limit on certain materials, and certain other rules that relate to how we prepare for Shabbos just before Shabbos begins, to make sure that we're not carrying anything that we don't want to carry, to make sure that we prepared everything that needs to be done before Shabbos. So that's a section of Torah learning. And this custom has it that we recite Bame Malikin, this chapter of Mishnah, at this moment just before Shabbos formally begins, because it relates to reviewing the rules, the laws of the mitzvot that apply at that time. It takes place around the time that we're lighting the Shabbos candles, around the time that we're doing our last preparations for Shabbos. So at that moment, we recite, we review the text that gives us the details of what we're supposed to be doing and what we're not supposed to be doing. That's why Jews say, Bama Malikin at that moment. The other custom, the other minhag, is to say this prayer of Kigavna. This is a prayer which is actually a passage from the Zohar, the classic work of Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah. And it's written in Aramaic, not Hebrew. And just to share a couple of quotes from this prayer, Kigavna di'inun misyachadin le'ela be'echad, just as they in heaven above unite into oneness, of hachi i is yachades lasata baraza de'echad, so to the Shabbos below on earth joins that mystery of oneness. In other words, it's expressing that our observance of Shabbos creates a unity and a oneness, a joining together with God here on earth as there is this unity within God above in heaven. Raza de Shabbos, the secret of Shabbos, the mystery, the essence of Shabbos, ihi Shabbos de asachadas baraza de echad. The mystery, the essence, the secret of Shabbos is that Shabbos is attached to the mystery of oneness, that there is one God and that everything is connected and everything comes from one God and Shabbos has at its heart, at its core, expressing this unity, this intimacy, this oneness with God on Shabbos. Va'anpa nihirin b'nihiri ilah this atras lasata ba'ama kedisha, and Shabbos is illuminated with a supernatural light, a spiritual light. The kulhon mis atrin binish masan chadatin, and on earth, here in our world, on Shabbos, Shabbos is crowned by holy people, 
the Jews who are observing Shabbos, each of whom is endowed with a new and purified soul. The Rav Rav Salavechik often said that this prayer, Kigavna, expresses the essence of Shabbos like no other passage in all of Jewish literature. And I must tell you, speaking personally, it is not my custom to say this prayer, Kigavna. So I only actually say it rarely when I happen to be in another place where it is the custom to say it. And on those few occasions when I have the opportunity to say this prayer, it resonates within me very deeply. I feel a very strong connection to this prayer. I feel the meaning of it and the ability to draw from it this awareness of Shabbos that I don't otherwise get. Now, in general, there are exceptions to this, but in general, the custom in Ashkenazic synagogues is to say Bame Madlikin, the passage from the Mishnah, and the custom in Sephardic or Hasidic places, shuls, is to say Kigavna. And that kind of feeds the stereotype, but you know, stereotypes are not always accurate. There is certainly overlap, but stereotypes often have a certain amount of truth to them that the Ashkenazic world is focused on the details, on the rules, on the laws. Shabbos is starting. How do you light Shabbos candles? How do you get ready for Shabbos? What are you supposed to do? What are you not supposed to do? That's kind of an Ashkenazic European approach to Jewish life. What do we do? How do we do it? What are the details? And a Sephardic approach or a Hasidic approach emphasizes the feeling, the awareness, the spirituality the oneness with God. And that's expressed by their communities, their congregations, saying this prayer of Kagavna. Of course, it's a stereotype. There is overlap in both directions, but there is some truth to that stereotype. But here's the real truth. Every single Jew needs both. Every single Jew, in order to reach the stage of Likadosho, to make the Sabbath holy, needs both. We need Zachar. We need to remember the awareness. We need to say Kigavna to express the unity, how Shabbos brings us closer to God. We need the consciousness of the spirituality of Shabbos. And we need Shomar Es Yom Shabbos in order to make it holy. We have to guard Shabbos. We have to protect Shabbos. We have to know what to do, what not to do. We need the rules. We need the details. Both are necessary. Either one alone is insufficient. Either one alone will not lead to the goal of to make it holy. If we just feel and we think and we're aware, but we're not actually desisting from prohibited work on Shabbos, we're not going to make Shabbos holy. And if we only desist from prohibited activity, but we don't have any awareness of coming closer to God, of the unity that Shabbos presents, we're also not making Shabbos holy. We need both. Rav Yud Amital started a yeshiva decades ago. Har Etzion, just a few miles south of Yerushalayim. And the yeshiva now and for decades is one of the premier yeshivas at institutions of higher Jewish learning in the world. So, Rav Amital started a new yeshiva. So he's starting fresh. So he gets to decide how is it going to be in his yeshiva? What are the customs that will be adopted and, and, and put into place in his yeshiva? He gets to decide. He starts with a clean slate. It would be as if one of us were to go to a new place 
where there's nothing there and we start a new community. Okay, it's new, it's fresh. I can decide every policy, every opinion, every practice. We decide from fresh. There is no precedent. He established something that is just so, in my mind, so brilliant. He established that in his yeshiva, they would say both prayers on Friday night. And so in Rav Amital's yeshiva, from the time that he founded it, continuing today, every Friday night, just before Mariv, first they say, Bamim Alikin, and then they say, Kagavna, and then they proceed with Mariv, the evening service. Now, I must tell you, I am not familiar with that practice being done anywhere else in the world. Perhaps it is, and if it is, I'd love to hear about it, but I'm not aware of it being done anywhere else in the world. Of course, it is a big change from the existing customs. There's a custom to say, Bama Malikin, and there's a different custom to say, Kigavna. You have to have really broad shoulders, like Rav Amital did, to be able to feel that you have the authority to start something new that no one else has ever done before, to the best of my knowledge. To do both. I don't feel that I have that kind of broad shoulders and that authority to initiate that type of practice. Although I have to say, I think what Rav Amital decided is the ideal. Because for a place only to say Bama Malikin, but you're missing out Kagavna. And for a place to say only Kagavna, but you're missing out Bama Malikin, how could you emphasize one and not the other? And I think that what Rav Amital decided is the ideal. That's the way it should be. That is certainly what is true. Okay, each congregation will emphasize one or the other. But the truth is, we do need both. So, I don't have that kind of authority, and I'm not that bold. But I have always thought to myself, if I was ever involved in a merger of two synagogues, one Ashkenaz and one Sephard, meaning one synagogue that said Bama Malikin on Friday night and another synagogue that said Kigavno on Friday night. So, of course, if there's a merger of two synagogues, you're going to have to figure out how to, uh, which customs to, to take and which customs will be reflected, and which texts to say, which versions to say. I always thought to myself, however all of the larger issues would get resolved and worked out, wouldn't it be amazing, as a way of bringing together two congregations, an Ashkenaz and a Sfard, to institute Rav Amital's position to say both of these prayers to reflect both of these emphases and balance them one against the other. That, I think, I would have the shoulders to be able to do under those circumstances. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but if it did, I think I would consider that. I think it would be remarkable to be able to join together Ashkenaz and Sfard, two different customs, by not by taking away, but by adding both of these prayers, one after the other. But certainly, when considering any activity or pastime on Shabbos, there must be this two-part test of whether it is appropriate. Number one, is it in accord with the rules of Shabbos? And number two, does it lead to greater holiness and unity an awareness on Shabbos. And if an activity or a pastime does not meet both of those tests, then that means that it is not appropriate for Shabbos because we have to constantly be reaching for both of those goals together. Tomorrow when we read from the Torah, Shomar es Yom HaShabbos Lekadshoh, guard and protect the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And we remember 
that when we said the same words earlier back in the parish of Yisro, we did not say Shamar, we said Zohar, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. When we think about that clash, that apparent clash, which is not a clash, it's a richness, it's a fullness, it's a complexity. We should focus on this dual nature of Shabbos. And we should make sure that at every moment we are showing the proper balanced emphasis on both. Zachar to remember, Shamar to protect. Bama Malikin and Kigavna. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and a beautiful Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.